All right, so in this video on the daily push, I'm back with the little hairy muff attached to the top of my t-shirt. This is actually a microphone and we're mic'd up again, trying to learn different tricks or perfect different tricks. I made a little video like this before where I'd mic myself up to try and figure out a trick and people seem to like it, so I thought I'd make some more. So, uh, you know, I'm for the people. So I usually think pretty deep and pretty technically when it comes down to learning different tricks. So I thought I'd get this mic up there and basically just talk through my thought process, just explain the way that I'm thinking around these different tricks to hopefully give you some insight into how you can maybe figure out the same tricks or how you can apply the stuff that I'm saying into other tricks that you're gonna be practicing as well. So let's get it. All right, we is mic'd, we is mic'd up. We're gonna be doing some nolly heel practice. So nolly heels I can do pretty much no problem, but they're just not exactly how I want them and they're not consistent how I want them. First one. If they were all like that. One thing I notice of tricks like nolly flips and, and switch flips where people struggle to get like a decent flick and they kind of just like, you know, donkey kick it down. I found for me personally that really focusing on trying to feel the side of my flicking foot connect with the board. So really feeling that kind of like, kind of sensation. It helps me get the flick. Applying that to nolly heels, if we do that now, really focusing on getting that feeling. That's definitely a part of it. Yesterday skating the five at Macba, trying to do nolly heels down the five. And I noticed certain times when I would pop it, I would just be leaning like forwards just a tiny little bit. So one thing that I think really helps with nollie heels, and to be fair, probably all tricks, when you bend down and when you come up to pop the trick, making sure that you're like really level and centered over your board and that you're jumping directly up. So when you jump up, you're not like leaning forwards like that at all. You're not like leaning backwards. You're really trying to just like come up and down as much as you can. So really just like, I felt like I kind of leaned forwards a little bit that way then. When I was doing that down the five yesterday, it's just a tiny little bit that doesn't really make a difference on flat, but when you're jumping down a five, obviously if you're gonna land on flat, like angled this much, when you're going down a stair set, you're gonna be like angled much more. So you're just gonna increase your chances of kicking it away, you know? All right, so for these next attempts, I'm gonna be focusing on really trying to come down and stay centered above my board when I'm bending down and when I'm popping. That was the one. If they were all like that, I'd be really happy. But they're not. So I'm not happy. So another thing that I figured out the other day when it comes down to like flipping trick, that when you pop like different flip tricks, you really need to leave like a slight delay. We're getting like just too tech though. You need to leave like a slight delay between the pop and the flick. Because if you like flick too early, it's gonna, it's gonna do one of those like mob flips where it shoots back down. But if you like pop up, and delay that flick a little bit, you're gonna basically make the board level out to wherever the height of the wheels are. Whereas if you pop like this and then you already like, you're already flicking, it's gonna just, it's not gonna come up any higher because you're already like limiting its ability to rise any further. What a lovely shot with the, I think in Brazil they're called like bonginhos, something like that. I like that word, bonginho. Level, but flicked it too early. Sorry, that's why I didn't come up. Oh, that was a seed. Imagine if that was down a stair set. Those are the worst bad hills, man. You just absolutely die. Ah, oh, man, you know what I just figured out then? This one's almost too tech. I don't want to explain it. I'm almost embarrassed. Oh, man, okay. So it seems as well, one way that you can make sure that your body stays level is that when you pop, if you actually almost focus on popping kind of forwards a little bit like that, it seems to stabilize the rest of your body. Yeah, that seems to be the secret. There's a lot of seeds around here. It's like a minefield of seeds. It's a guaranteed slam coming soon when I catch myself in one of these seeds. <laughs> what did I fucking tell you, man? I knew it. Predicted the future. We create our realities. There we go. We got a clean passageway through to prosperity. 
A little bit rocket. Seed life. I am the seed child. Oh, these fucking seeds. If you're a seed and you're looking for somewhere to come on holiday and you want to meet lots of new seeds, this is the spot. Yeah, that little forward popping angle seems to be really good actually. Seems to really help. All right, we're gonna go into a new trick anyway. We're gonna try and go for backside flips. So backside flips I can do pretty much consistently as well, but I, I still feel like they're just not fully locked in. And I'd like to get them down some gaps as well and st like stuff like that in the future. So I think the key thing that I learned with backside flips, I actually figured out watching Luan in a game of skate in Battle of the Barracks. And what he does is that when he like goes down to pop the trick, he's like winding like this so much so then when he actually does pop, he just whips it back around. It's kind of like the Reynolds frontside flip trick tip back in the day where he was like, you need to have wound up and then by the time you pop, your body also already needs to be like 90 degrees open. And it's kind of the same with backside flips as well. I figured out that like, you need to be winding and then by the time you pop, you already need to have like started the swing phase. So already like kind of whipping yourself around. It feels super uncomfortable because the cops are just like literally parked right there behind me. Is it just me or does the presence of any cop in any situation just make you feel uncomfortable? <laughs> I still struggled getting it all the way around, you know, there was some resistance. I'm still kind of like landing a little heavy on the back foot. It kind of just slows you down, you know. Whoa. And I guess maybe as well when you flick, you need to... Yeah, with the flick as well, if you imagine like... So if you've already wound up to so then when you come down to pop, that you're going to be like 90 degrees facing that way. If you now flick straight off the end of your board, you're probably going to miss the flick. Because like that wind up is going to have caused your board to just rotate a little bit when you actually pop it. So you need to focus on flicking that way. Flicking like 90 degrees out in front, I think. I'm just gonna do a couple with that 90 degree flick just to verify. Yes, actually, man, that 90 degree flick, that's fucking essential. That seems to as well help the board rotate the full direction as well. If you imagine like once you've popped it and it's around there, if you're flicking in that direction, it's gonna push the board as well as flicking it. So yeah, that 90 degree flick, that's the one. That 90 degree flick, fuck, I did not realize. That is a good little tactic. Physics right there, my friend, physics. Oh, that was the seed, redo. Taken out by a seed. I don't know what that says about my manliness. All right, so the next mic'd up trick, this is one that I can't do. I've tried it a few times in the past and it really didn't work very well at all. We're gonna try and get some normal front side heel flip. I feel like this trick now, it's kind of a fashionable one, you know, and obviously, as you can see, I'm big into fashion, so I just need to learn it, you know? Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple of just heel flips first. My heel flips kind of suck, to be honest. Maybe I should learn heel flips first. <laughs> Oh man, you know one of the problems with heel flips and me is that I flick them on my fucking ankle bone. So actually, you know what, maybe I'm going to abort this mission. That little kind of flick on the ankle bone then made me realise that there's actually a different way of doing heel flips that you don't have to use your ankle bone. You almost flick on the, on the toe, it's almost like a kick flip. Okay, I just figured out heel flips accidentally. All right, so for heel flips, just a quick little like insert. I always used to do them where I would flick with my foot kind of that way. And it would end up flicking around this point to the top bit of the shoe. But with that one then, I was focusing on almost flicking it with like this front bit. So it was almost like a kick flip, but just a heel flip, if that makes sense. And the flick was just like so much smoother and more comfortable. Man, 
So that should now unlock the, like, the front heels much better as well. All right, I'm just gonna go for a first go one. All right. All right, so one other thing that I find really helps when you're learning tricks as well. For example, now I want to do a front heel. I'll do a trick beforehand, which is very like which is similar to that trick, or it has a certain aspect of that trick involved. And then that kind of motion will then carry over to the second trick that I'm trying to learn. So for example, I'm going to do a heel flip now beforehand and then go straight into a front heel with the hope that the flicking motion of the heel flip that I do at the start will then carry over and that heel flip residue will basically last for that front heel and then help me with it. So horrible, but Man, I can't believe I've been doing heel flips wrong for 20 years. The amount of cuts on my ankles, like... Man. Ah. Oi, this tree, this tree is a gnarly one. It's got so many spikes. One time I was skating at this one spot and I thought I'd be like, you know, so, like cool and funny and just skate into it like chest up and I completely just cut myself to shit. So that wasn't fun. If you can do heel flips, I guess this isn't actually that hard to do. Oh, dude, that one fucking flipped like right on the ankle bone. Oh man, that was on the ankle again. I don't think I can. I don't think I can do any more because if I keep flicking it on the ankle, it's gonna be. Does that count? Oh, dude, okay, abort mission, abort mission, man. That was like another one on the ankle bone. Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, 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 <laughs> no more. Can that be seen? All right, so that's it from me and Jimmy Muffler. Make sure you subscribe for regular content that's gonna improve how you skate and how you feel when you skate. And <laughs> man, that's it for this one. Man, whenever I come down to say that last little like sentence of the video, this energy just surges up through me and just releases itself all over the walls and the ceiling. All right, that's it, see you later.